One of the features of V11 is the batch controller. This function is an improvement over the previous version. In this lesson, you will learn that batch controller instances are automatically created and synchronized with the corresponding X3 solutions. A new set of APIs is used by the X3 script to call JS code to gather data for the creation of the batch controller. The management of the batch server is now part of the Syracuse server. Although the batch controller is launched by Syracuse, the creation of the task and the setup of the parameters are still carried out in the usage batch server functions. Sage X3 solutions can be accessed by several runtimes, so the corresponding batch controller can be configured to use any runtime of the solution. If several runtimes exist, the load balancer uses a round robin algorithm that selects a runtime at connection time. There are no limitations on how many batch tasks can be launched, but if the parameter maximum number of active queries set up on the batch controller is zero, no batch task can be launched. A new option has been added to the query management screen. It gives information concerning the time reference of the database. Let's now see the step-by-step -step creation of the batch controller. Batch controllers are automatically created and synchronized with the corresponding X3 solutions. Let's take a look at the description of an X3 solution. It is possible to create several runtimes in order to avoid bottlenecks when the activity is quite heavy, for example, the end of the month. In this way, the batch controller can disperse several tasks on several runtimes. And when activity is low, just disable the runtime to limit costs, for example, if you're using the cloud environment. The runtime can be blacklisted if it doesn't answer to the connection request and cannot be used to connect during the timeout setup period but it can be unchecked manually. Autoconfig means that the runtime server has been automatically configured by the synchronization service based on the solution JSON file. Another important piece of the runtime is the assignment of a tag. The main server has by default the tag main that cannot be canceled. Some specific functions of X3 run exclusively in a main runtime. You can create a tag for each subsidiary runtime and declare it to be exclusive or not. This tag can be assigned to a group of users, and the runtime can only be accessed by the users of this group. If the tag is not exclusive, users of a group without a tag can also access this runtime. Let's now go take a look at where the X3 tag can be assigned at in the group. This can be found under Administration, Users, Groups. Select your group, and then here in the X3 Server Tags field, you can assign an X3 tag to this specific group of users. Let's now see how the batch controller is created from a solution. And this is found under Administration, Endpoints, batch server. The code is equal to the X3 solution code. It is unique and cannot be modified. If the auto start service checkbox is active, it means that the batch controller would be started at the Syracuse web server startup and would execute a batch request of all the solutions folders when necessary. The three statuses of the controller are running. This is one of the statuses of the batch server, which means the controller is active and executing queries based on the time between two searches setting. Stopped. This status of the batch controller means that the controller is not active and would not perform any action. Stopping. While this status means that the controller is no longer active, but still waiting for pending queries to be stopped. Next, let's take a look at the configuration box. The time between two searches field, the batch server is in wait mode during this time. 
It may be because there is no task to be launched or the maximum number of simultaneous tasks has been reached. Once this time is passed, the server re-verifies whether it is possible to launch one or more tasks. A time in the order of 30 to 60 seconds is generally advised. Timeout search time. A task having exceeded the execution duration quota that has been authorized is stopped by the server, but the effort in verifying the execution duration for queuing tasks is quite heavy. It is therefore possible to define an interval in seconds between two reads of this type. A minimum time between 1 to 5 seconds is usually sufficient, except in specific cases. Maximum delay to launch a query in minutes. This field allows the specification of the admissible delay in minutes for the start of a query. This delay is the time measured between the moment from which the task has been planned and the current time. Generally, the fact that the number of current tasks exceeds the maximum number of possible tasks is the reason why there may be some delay. A task which could not be started within the allotted time will be marked as outside of the time limits and will not be executed. The delay can also be defined at the level of the task. If it's done at that level, that value takes priority. If this field is equal to zero and the admissible delay indicated for the task is also equal to null, then the task will never be considered outside of the time limits. All these configurations can only be modified when the status of the batch controller is stopped. Let's take a look at the context box. The X3 solution field. This code taken from the solution is set to read only mode. It cannot be modified. Administrative endpoint is the endpoint that will be used to get the list of queries to execute. This is set by default with the endpoint corresponding to the Sage X3 Solutions parent folder. The user field. This will be the user code that will be used to get the list of queries to execute. This is not set by default and must be set manually before any usage of the batch controller. It is a mandatory setting because Sage X3 connections need a Sage X3 user login. The role field. This is the role that will be used to get the list of queries to execute administrative tasks. This is not set by default and must be set manually before any usage of the batch controller. It is a mandatory setting because Sage X3 connections need badges. Local preference. Here you will set the language that will be used to get the list of queries to execute administrative tasks. This is set by default to EN US and is a mandatory setting because Sage X3 connections need local preferences. Now let's look at the parameters box. In here we have the X3 runtimes. These runtimes are the runtimes defined in the X3 solution. If several runtimes exist, the load balancer uses a round robin algorithm that selects a runtime at the time of connection. If the maximum number of active queries is zero, it means that the runtime is not active and therefore will not be used by the load balancer to assign a task. Server host and server port can either be a network name or an IP address. They are taken directly from the X3 solution configuration. They are in read-only mode and cannot be modified. Maximum number of tasks tells the number of tasks that can be activated simultaneously or on the corresponding runtime. If this number is exceeded, the starting of the other pending tasks is postponed. If set to zero, the runtime is ignored and not used to launch queries. A server is eligible if it is not disabled or blacklisted in the X3 solutions runtime. Some specific queries will automatically run only on the main server because of application needs. This is an automatic assignment that does not require any configuration. Some changes done on the batch controller itself or on corresponding Sage X3 solutions are directly applied on the fly and taken into account by the batch controller execution. Several services are available from the right panel. Start launches the batch controller execution. It will perform some administrative and recurrent tasks to ask the X3 supervisor to execute batch queries. These calls are performed based on the time between two searches settings. Stop and stop all. Both stop the batch controller execution. These settings will perform some last administrative tasks in order to ask the Sage X3 supervisor if some queries are still pending until no pending queries remain. During this process, the status will be set to stopping, waiting for pending queries to end, and then stopped. Stop is for one runtime, while stop all stops all the runtimes in the batch controller. The list of queries allows you to see historical 
query lists. Here, you can see their statuses, what runtime has been used to execute each query, and also different common properties. Synchronized configuration retrieves old configurations set in the legacy batch server or initialize with default values of the following properties the time between two searches, timeout search time, and the maximum delay to launch a query. This presentation has shown you that the batch controller is automatically created and synchronized with the X3 solution. If several runtimes are defined on the X3 solution, these runtimes will be used in the batch controller by using a round robin algorithm. There is one main runtime which runs specific queries because of the application needs. A runtime can be used ex exclusively by a group of users. Information in the batch controller can be updated only when the status is stopped.